All right, today is all about a technique I've seen online happening a lot lately, making a normal pour over and then pouring that resulting brew over a Paragon rock afterwards. So I was asked about this and honestly, not knowing what the result would be, um, I wanted to have a look at this technique and understand it better. So what I started with was a single brew with no Paragon, normal old style pour over. So there's absolutely no variance between the tasting samples. I swelled everything together. I poured half into one cup and half over the Paragon rock, going back and forth between the two to give us that consistency in the liquid going in to see if that rock will make any impact on the coffee beyond just basic temperature changes. I put both cups underneath the compass, be tasting them both at 44, 45 degrees and 37, 38 degrees to give us two different temperature ranges and also to detach the effects of drinking temperature on the results. So for my tasting, there was really subtle differences, uh, but nothing I could really firmly grab onto and go, this one's juicier or this one's more textural. Um, it was quite difficult to pick from my palate. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that there was no bias on this. So I took these samples out. So people had absolutely no idea what was the difference. And yeah, the results were changing depending on who tasted. So some people slightly preferred the one poured over the rock. Some people did not like the one poured over the rock. They didn't know that there wasn't a major fundamental difference to the brewing. So they were maybe looking for differences. When I told them they were the same brew, they'd go back and taste and go, yeah, right, it tastes almost exactly the same. So um, from what we can see here, it's very small one percenters. I then repeated this process by brewing a Paragon filter, chilling the extract as it came out of the cone versus this technique. And there was a really big difference. It was night and day difference, the Paragon having that juicier texture, smoother, and the non-Paragon or the poured over the rock afterwards had that slight grittiness, slight graininess. So it was very much mimicking a standard pour over technique. Now this was something that I could take out and we could get the same results, same comments over and over again from many different tasters. When we see these big differences between the control and then the technique, for example, applying a Paragon with the extract chilling, that's where we start to see validity with the technique and it becomes even more valid the more repeats and the more of the same result that we get. So when we make our pour over, the key with any form of chilling is to capture those volatiles immediately out of the brewer. When we apply heat, those really volatile compounds are released immediately. So if we wait for that brew to finish, that liquid pouring straight into a hot surface or straight into hot liquid, the volatiles are already gone. The damage is already done. It's really important to minimize the extract's air time. It's that agitation movement through the air with the temperature is where we lose a lot of those volatile aroma compounds. This is why we made the Paragon adjustable to the height of the brew. We can bring that rock as close to the exit of the brewer as possible so we can retain as many of those more delicate compounds as possible. So with extract chilling, as we taste that coffee cooling down, the, the difference between that and the control becomes wider and wider. This is because there's a chemical difference in the liquid. It is not linked to tasting temperature. If you wanna bring your brew to a more palatable drinking temperature at a faster rate, of course, take your brew, pour it over a Paragon rock after. But if you want chemical changes, if you want more juiciness, better texture, more quality in your brew, you'll capture those volatiles, running it over the Paragon rock as close out of the brewer as possible. Thanks so much for watching. Happy chilling.